o cosmos enai dikos mu, kai etsi enai o ilios. The world is mine, and so is the sun. Guys, what is wrong with me? So, the importance of vitamin D3 and the lack of vitamin D3 in the general U.S. population, I think, is one of the kind of biggest problems there is right now. There's various degrees of sun worshipping in culture, in religion, I mean, what's the Egyptian god of sun, Ra? And I think vitamin D3 deficiency in the general population is one of the biggest problems we have today. The D3 RDA is 400 IU, and the body can produce up to 100,000 IU per day. Uh, it's safe to say we are way off. Uh, doctors even now are kind of waking up, and some of them are prescribing 1 to 10,000 IU per day of D3. Nomadic Russians have 40 to 60 IU of D3. Uh, 40 Above 40 is where D3 starts getting stored for winter, and 60 is the minimum amount of D3 that is seen as necessary to get through winter. So it's safe to say that you know we want to be above 65, 70 IU of D3 to be in optimal health. Birth weight and adult height are directly correlated to the month you're born. May is the best, followed by June, followed by July, and the others are drastically lower. Vitamin D3 is so important in immune system function, differentiation of cells, making sure your body produces adequate proportions of white blood cells to red blood cells, a lower body weight, longer telomeres, it's associated with both of those things, uh, helps white blood cells clear infections, raises good cholesterol, and helps absorb calcium. And this is the most important thing because the reason the calcium RDA is too high is partially because the D3 RDA is too low. And most people have too much calcium circulating in their system because they don't have enough vitamin D3 to absorb it and enough vitamin K2 to metabolize it into the bones. There are no symptoms from low vitamin D3. So for anyone following a carnivore diet or trying to be optimally healthy and ignoring their vitamin D3 levels, this is one of the most contradictory things you can do. Almost, at, I, I would say at least 80% of the people I've talked to that have given me blood work have vitamin D3 levels that are abysmally low. And I've seen single digit vitamin D3. I've seen, you know, 15 teen digit vitamin D3. And unfortunately, the RDA metric for vitamin D3 is 20 to 100 IU. If you go to a doctor and you've never been in the sun in your life, you might measure adequate vitamin D3. Whereas if you've been in the sun for eight hours a day, you might also measure adequate vitamin D3. So the current metrics are way off. And, you know, the vitamin D council recommends 40 to 80, Michael Hollick 30 to 100, Danish Medical Society 20 to 60, Dr. Mercola 50 to 100. But it's safe to say above 60 is a safe bet for optimal health. Uh, one other interesting thing to note is cancer rates are higher the further you are from the equator. And that also takes into account skin color. Now, how do we actually raise our vitamin D3 levels and what's the difference between sun, tanning beds, and supplementing? Uh, there's three types of rays, UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVC don't really penetrate the ozone. UVA and UVB are in equal proportions for the most part in sunlight. The ratios differ depending on the location and time of year. UVB rays are the only rays that emit vitamin D3 from your skin. Uh, those produce vitamin D3. UVA rays can change the color of your skin. So the difference between sun and tanning beds is that tanning beds have much higher proportions of UVA to UVB. That being said, you can still get a decent amount of UVB and vitamin D3 from a tanning bed. You just have to supplement additionally. So ideal perfect scenario, it's peak part of the year uh, and you have to tan at around solar noon. So you want two to three hours of sun exposure when the UVB rays are the highest. And this, of course, depends on your skin color. Uh, one important thing to note is a high omega-6 to omega-3 ratio is associated with higher rates of cancer. So if you do have high omega-6 in the diet, I recommend you use sunblock and supplementation while improving the omega-3 ratios of your diet. Uh, this is one of the most uh, important things that I've noted as of lately. That's an argument against grain-fed beef, pork, poultry, a really good reason to incorporate wild-caught fish or at least higher quality animal foods in your diet. So obviously most people can't get two to three hours of peak UV per day. I try to do that in the summer. And if I do that, then I don't bother doing anything else. Uh, in regards to supplementation and tanning beds, tanning beds are great, but most people don't want to go tanning. And unfortunately, either tanning beds or sun exposure is necessary in conjunction with supplementing because blood plasma vitamin D3 does not necessarily correlate with active vitamin D3. And there's also very beneficial degradation products that occur in the body when your body metabolizes extra vitamin D3. So 
Uh, and again, people say tanning beds, fake tanning, blah, blah, blah. It's the same rays as the sun. The difference is that tanning beds have more UVA. So you're not getting as much UVB, as much vitamin D3. That's why we need to supplement. So basically for a supplement, all you want to see is MCT oil and lanolin. Uh, from lanolin is vitamin D3 is cold calciferol from sheep wool. And you can, I do this transdermally. So what I do is I take a dropper, I put it on myself and then I just rub it in. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but you know, my stomach tends to be a little tanner than the rest of my body. That's because, uh, you know, your body absorbs vitamin D better on fatty parts because uh, you need the other fat soluble vitamins to absorb vitamin D3. Another important thing we're going to touch on is the importance of getting all the fat soluble vitamins in order to absorb vitamin D3. But basically what I do is I rub it on my body. You could take it orally too. I know it absorbs when I rub it on myself and I feel more comfortable not ingesting the oil or the chemical because... The way they make uh, that, they extract it with hexane from sheep wool. I don't think it's something you should be putting in your body, but rubbing transdermally is definitely better than taking it orally. So ideally, you know, you go out, you get a little bit of sun, you rub your vitamin D3 supplement on you. You want about 10,000 IU per day to get up to normal levels and then 5,000 IU per day for maintenance. And this depends on the person. You kind of have to get blood work done and try to see what helps you maintain like 60 to 65 nanograms per liter of vitamin D3. You need fat soluble vitamins and a healthy gut to absorb vitamin D3. So people on vegan diets, despite taking vitamin D3, have very low blood levels of vitamin D3. This is because of the inflammation in the stomach from various plant foods, as well as the lack of fat soluble vitamins in the diet to absorb vitamin D3. So this is something to keep in mind and it also ties in with iron absorption and, and a bunch of other vitamins and minerals that people are deficient in on a plant-based diet. So ideal perfect scenario for the day, you wake up, you hydrate, you have maybe a high fat soluble vitamin meal, maybe some eggs, high quality pastured eggs with raw butter for breakfast. You take your vitamin D3 supplement, you rub it on yourself, and then you get an hour or two of sun. If you can't get an hour or two of sun, uh, I suggest just increasing the fat soluble vitamin content of the meal as well as eating some liver. Uh, I made a video on vitamin synergy yesterday about the importance of getting all these vitamins in conjunction with each other. and Vitamin A and vitamin D have kind of anti antagonistic properties where if an animal has high levels of vitamin A and low levels of vitamin D, they can get defects. Same thing with vice versa. You want the vitamin A to vitamin D ratio in the diet to be optimal. Vitamin D can be higher than vitamin A. It can be drastically higher, but you don't want the vitamin A to be too high. Symptoms of vitamin D3 overdose from supplements uh, you just won't sleep. If you're getting insomnia and you took a lot of vitamin D3 and you can't sleep one night and then you don't take the supplement and you sleep fine the next night, you know you're at a blood level of vitamin D3 where you don't really need to be supplementing anymore. Your body has enough stored. We kind of went over calcium and the importance of vitamin D3 and calcium metabolism. I think vitamin D3 RDA being too low and the calcium RDA being very high are two of the biggest problems with the recommended dietary guidelines right now. And one really interesting thing, and I should probably do a whole different video on vitamin K2, uh, but vitamin K2 is primarily known for blood health as well as metabolizing calcium into bones, but K2 prevents calcification of the arteries. It cannot reverse calcification of the arteries. So keep in mind, guys, all of these things in regards to vitamin D3 will improve your health. They will give you more energy, but they cannot fix damage done in the past to some degree. Uh, especially with, you know, the O6 to omega-3 ratio in your diet can be fixed and then you could get adequate sun. But if you have skin cancer and various things from a poor diet beforehand, this is where things become very questionable and you don't really know. If you have prior arterial buildup and you start incorporating vitamin K2 into your diet and vitamin D3, it's safe to say that you might not get more buildup, but it cannot reverse arterial calcification and arterial plaque. It can improve things, but not reverse them. Uh, just to read the study done on turkeys, when turkeys were fed a diet containing high levels of both vitamin A and D, growth rate and bone mineral content were similar to the ones fed the required levels of vitamin A and D. So it's important to know that you just need to get these vitamins in pretty much equal amounts if you are consuming lots of liver, uh, so to speak. So most of this data has been things I've accumulated through various research articles and topics that I will post in the description. Uh, I know a lot of you guys bring up Dr. Jack Cruz, but... Uh, apparently, I heard that he's known for plagiarizing a lot of information, and 
a lot of his information is good, but it's not, it's missing a lot of the key points of vitamin D3 and the important things we need to know. Vitamin D3 is one of the main elements in general to kind of optimizing your health. You know, I talk about it a lot with water, diet, exercise, but it's, it's really understated in that once you get all of these elements correct in your diet is when, you know, you can go four days without sleeping and still have high energy levels. It's when you hop out of bed every day, not needing coffee. The constant high energy levels are a result of getting these elements of your diet perfect. Uh, one point I forgot to touch on, guys, was you can get vitamin D3 from animal foods. Now, were there groups of indigenous people that got all of their vitamin D3 from animal foods? They got a pretty large amount of it, but foods like cod liver oil, which I recommend the canned stuff in my affiliate links, uh, very fatty fish liver, salmon roe. The problem with vitamin D3 from foods is they're generally foods people don't have access to. Either those fatty wild caught fish, or you could get very freshly killed summer animals. So, you know, raw dairy, which I'll talk about uh, tomorrow or the next day, will have decent amounts of vitamin D3 depending on the quality of pasture the animal was on during the summer. Uh, the pig's blood, for example, the flesh and tissue and blood and fat of the animal will have vitamin D3 if it is a high quality animal. Unfortunately, most people don't have access to those high vitamin D3 foods. If you do have access to various fish livers, cod liver oil, that is okay to get some vitamin D3, but at the end of the day, the problem still is, in order to get adequate amounts of vitamin D3, you have to consume either unrealistic amounts of those foods or just supplement and get the sun. Uh, the reason I didn't really bring up uh, the food thing or didn't figure it was that important is because several hundred IU per day from fish, that can add up if you, all you eat is that fatty fish every day and get some sun. I think in those places where those fatty fish were common, those are almost used to supplement the lack of sunlight. So uh, again, even salmon roe, maybe if you had a quarter to a half of a pound of it a day, I doubt you would break two, 3,000 IU, which is not optimal for the day. So it's really just a problem with freshness and food accessibility. Either the ruminant animals you buy or the grass-fed raw dairy you buy is not high quality enough, or you just don't have access to wild-caught fatty fish. It's very, very difficult unless you're raising your own animals or have pretty much no budget whatsoever to get these foods. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you guys would like to support me, uh, please check out my Patreon, the various levels of support. Uh, I do various brief diet write-ups and things like that. Uh, you can contact me one-on-one -on -one for diet consultations, frankatufano at gmail.com. Uh, that's in the description. And I recently have an Amazon shop where I just have like some salt and some stuff that I, regular products that I purchase, cod liver canned, uh, things like that. Uh, guys, this was ridiculous. I spent like, uh, I spent at least half an hour trying to tie this stupid toga. I got like 10 safety pins on and I went outside and I picked some leaves off my tree for this stupid circle of leaves. But, uh, what are you gonna do? I'm having a little fun. You guys do reach out to me. Consultations in the toga are, what, what should we do? Three or five times the rate? You hear me? Uh, what's the rate? No, nah, I mean, what, what, we're gonna do five times the rate for toga, right? Nah, three times the rate. Three times the rate, alright, that works.